It turns out that some indicators of cardiovascular uh, risk, some of those risk factors, get improved when you're taking ashwagandha. Welcome to Price Plow. What's going on, Price Plow Nation, Nutribio Nation, and anyone out there looking for an ashwagandha supplement? This is Mike Roberto, founder of Price Plow, which is a tech and media company that covers the dietary supplement industry's news, reviews, and interviews. And we get into a lot of diet research, and in this case, cortisol and stress relief research as well. So today we're going to talk about Nutribio's new. KSM 66 ashwagandha. Is that going to focus? Now in this video, I'm going to try to keep it slightly calm. I sometimes start yelling at the camera, but I know that a lot of people looking for ashwagandha are onto the Ayurvedic side of things, the more peaceful, meditational, consciousness side of things. So we're going to try to keep it calm, but I got no promises for you because we get a little bit into this stuff. So before we go any further, lots of disclaimers. First off, this product and basically everything here was sent for free, including the bottle up there in my little mountain of Nutribio stuff. And our site is sponsored by Nutribio this month and basically every month for six months of uh, 2019. So I got to say thank you for sending it to for, for free. But uh, you know what? There's not going to be a whole lot of bias here because really it's talking about a single ingredient supplement here and we have written about KSM 66 ashwagandha for years now and the reason is because this is the most well-tested, most trusted supplement in the industry with the most clinical studies behind it. So this is an easy one for us to talk about. Now the difference here, why would you want one from Nutribio instead of someone else? And the main difference here is this. First off, each capsule has 600 milligrams and it is a vegetable capsule and they add no fillers or excipients to any other capsules. So they have a really cool capsule machinery process, which I've seen in person actually, that doesn't require them to add extra junk to it. But a lot of other, uh, you know, KSM 66 based ashwagandha supplements have 600 milligrams as well. The difference with Nutribio is that their CEO, Mark Glazier, is a fanatic about quality and they don't just trust, even though uh, KSM 66, which is made by Exorial Biomed, even though they are the most trusted name in the ashwagandha game, that's not enough for us. That's not enough for Mark Glazer for sure. They test all their incoming materials and their outgoing materials, but also they also do third party lab testing. And so if you go to checkmysubs.com and put in your lot number, and you could probably look at this one and, uh, and take a look, then you can see the lab test that they have for a third party lab test that they send outside as well. And that's the, uh, the extra mile that Nutribio goes to. But in general, the things I'm gonna talk about in this, outside of those uh, disclaimers and outside of those added benefits of Nutribio, the stuff we're gonna talk about is really mostly to do with any 300 or 600 milligram ashwagandha capsule made by K with KSM 66 inside of it. Some of the studies we cite were based upon KSM 66 itself. And some of them are just general ashwagandha powders. So Nutribio is a sports nutrition and supplement company. And that's why well, we love them because we are mostly athletes who follow this channel here on Price Plow. However, there is so much more to just the sports aspect, but we're gonna kind of focus on that and then talk about the other things. The main, the, the long story short with ashwagandha is that this is an Ayurvedic herb based out of the uh, ancient Indian medicine. It's been used for over 3,000 years and it's all about reducing cortisol, which we sometimes call the stress hormone. And when people are anxious or stressed out or they have a poor diet or they're working too hard, they're not sleeping enough, there's a whole slew of things that can go wrong. Cortisol levels often stay elevated and remain elevated. And when that's the case, things go badly. For instance, you're not gonna burn a whole lot of fat, especially I believe the visceral fat around your organs. If you have high cortisol levels, not gonna happen. It's gonna be very slow going and that belly is just not gonna go away. Uh, so some people put on the subcutaneous fat, get the love handles there and everything, and then some people put on the beer belly around the organs, the visceral fat. And I believe that's the type of fat when your cortisol levels are too high, that stuff just clings to your organs. And there's lots of ways around it. But um, sometimes we get caught in these negative feedback loops where we are so stressed out, we become like stressed out about being stressed out and we don't really ultimately solve the problem. We can't like get out of the, this like mini rat race inside ourselves. And that's where the first step can sometimes be outside of like before even solving your problem, like try to like just calm down and this is the type of supplement that can do that. And most of the mechanisms it operates on 
are by the reduction of cortisol. So I'm gonna, I have a couple notes here. I'm gonna be cheating a little bit, but we do have a blog post talking about all this on PriceBuzz blog. So you can take a look at that because all the citations are there. And basically though, the, the typical studies are on 300 milligrams, which some capsules have, but the best ones are on either 300 milligrams twice a day or just 600 milligrams flat out. And that's what we have here. Now, this is to be taken uh, always, you know, if you are really stressed out, if you're depressed or anything like that, and like have a serious medical issue, you need to see a doctor. You need to get help. Get help immediately if you need to. There's people out there that can help you. Uh, and always consult your doctor before starting any new diet or supplementation program, especially if we're gonna be talking about the mental health aspects. A pill can't solve your problems. A pill might maybe chillax you a little bit to like really just get you to work towards solving your problems, but you still need to solve the ultimate problem that's causing the problems. Anyway, uh, so this is to be taken, uh, you know, given the approval from your doctor, this is to be taken one capsule and uh, that's between meals. I take it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. I sometimes do mix it with caffeine and I've noticed that it definitely alleviates. And I've talked about this in other reviews where we talk about like you know, certain hardcore stimulants a little bit, like legal ones, but ones that are a little bit up above, above the caffeine uh, grade, let's just say, those stimulants, I feel lessened and more smoothed out and more relaxed effect with them and get the benefits and none of the cons when I take them with ashwagandha. And that's one thing that I love about it personally. But anyway, uh, so I do take it on empty stomach, sometimes with coffee, but oftentimes when I'm fasting and they say to take it with meals. The maximum dose, might as well get into that right now, the, and we've talked about this. I've never seen like a very large like toxicity study on, on this being too bad, but really 1200 milligrams a day, two capsules a day is really where we kind of land and like hey, that's a pretty good dose where no one's had a problem. One study that we're gonna talk about here though is using five grams of raw powder and that had actually a lot of fertility benefits, I believe, is the study. I'm not really no, I'm not going to ever recommend taking that much KSM 66 because this is standardized. Now, ashwagandha is also known as withania somnifera, and so the KSM 66 is, is is more of a, it is a full spectrum kind of blend, but they are targeting five percent of the withanolides, which are the main. Uh, component, the main constituent that is working on the anti-anxiety effect. And the real mechanism of action that is hypothesized is that it kind of blocks the GABAergic signals, which um, sometimes get amped up when you are getting a little bit stressed. And so we talk about that later on in the blog post about this we can link to. And that's, I think, I don't know if that's like totally proven though. There's some good you know, research showing that, but that is not necessarily the only way in which it works. But basically this helps keep cortisol levels low and that helps unlock and free things for you. And that is really especially helpful, like in the conditions where I said before, if you're like stressed out, not sleeping enough, it's great for those situations, you're working out really hard. There's like some strength-based studies. Um, you have naturally low testosterone for various reasons. You're low in fertility for various reasons. This is not gonna be lipstick on a pig though. If your diet is terrible and you're taking some uh, ashwagandha to fix it, your diet's still gonna be terrible and you're still gonna be mostly a mess. So it's not gonna solve anything. And we can talk about ways of increasing testosterone by getting rid of the garbage and the processed food diets and all that stuff. Basically, real quick, get rid of refined grains, get rid of refined sugars, and get rid of the processed, industrialized, uh, processed seed oils, like canola slash rape seed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, that kind of stuff. Those three things alone, you're gonna feel a whole lot better, more so than even a supplement. I'll just tell you that much. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about some of the research here. The one for the athletes, because Nutribio is an athlete's company, a lot of times you see these testosterone boosters, and they're marketed towards young men. And that's kind of stupid, because young men, if you're eating right and you're training hard, your testosterone is as high as it's gonna get and uh, naturally of course but there was a study on it was over 50 I think it was 57 young males who were healthy and they were doing a strength training pro program admittedly but at the end of this program their testosterone levels on average went up 15 percent so even if you're a healthy young male, where typically nothing works for healthy young males, you still might get a little bit of a bump. And I think that's like the coolest study for the athletes out there. Now on top of that though, let's talk about the cortisol reduction because that's why a lot, that's the main mechanism that works. So in one study, they were taking 300 milligrams twice a day. Admittedly, the, the we have the clinical dose here, but it was like spread out throughout the day. So you know, I'm not sure how much that, that really translates here, but it's gonna be at least close enough. Now in the, uh, after 60 days, in the subject group, 
that was actually taking the ashwagandha versus the control group because it was double-blinded placebo-controlled kind of study. The subject group, their cortisol declined by 28%, whereas the control group, theirs only went down 8%. So even though the placebo effect didn't work enough for them, there's something more to the ashwagandha, and I kind of talked about the mechanism before, that was lowering it. And that's the mechanism that's really helping with a lot of the stuff that we're gonna talk about down the line here. There was a, a similar study, and they're actually using less doses, 125 milligrams uh, placebo, zero milligrams in that case, or 250 milligrams. And in that study, the group taking 250 milligrams a day of ashwagandha, their cortisol levels went down 30.5%. So this has been like a repeated type of research and there's no doubt about it. Like high cortisol levels versus ashwagandha and ashwagandha seems to win at least to some extent. Again, it's not gonna solve all your problems, but some, there's definitely something here and everything follows with that. Um, now, now the, the one thing a lot of people take with this, this is in testosterone boosters. All these testosterone boosters that we see marketed towards men are really kind of like overblown sex supplements in a way, like fertility supplements. A lot of the stuff we talk about, um, testosterone might go up a little bit, like the 15% study, but what really works are the sex parameters like semen volume and semen uh, motility. I guess you probably weren't expecting to hear that, but hey, that's where we are here. Um, and all sorts of like virility, uh, you know, the, the frequency of erections, all that kind of stuff. And we just got demonetized. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, when taking a very large dose of, of straight up ashwagandha, there was a study, five grams, so I can't quote that with this. We're not talking about taking it, but it's just interesting stuff. Five grams of ashwagandha powder for three months. And all the different parameters that I was talking about, the quality improved on all of those. Uh, but here's what's crazy. They, were, they weren't able to get pregnant beforehand. 14% of the partners got their subjects pregnant. And that's a huge number compared to all sorts of people who are infertile. This is one of the things that I would throw at a problem if that were an issue for me. There's others to, to think about, such as maca, such as um, shilajit, such as Tonkat Ali, or otherwise known as, uh, I like the LJ100 version of that. Eurocoma Longifolia, uh, Tonkat Ali slash uh, LJ100 slash Long Jack, it's got all these names. Uh, and, and also de aspartic acid. That, real quick, is my kind of fertility stack for the bros out there. I don't, uh, I don't have that problem right now, so we're not gonna be worrying about that anymore. Uh, so that is, that is the is issue. And we've already talked about the 15% boost in testosterone for, for even the healthy males, because a lot of times we see these testosterone boosters you know, marketing towards guys, but then you look at it and it's like, oh, well, those guys didn't have any gonads. You know, they were hypogonadal or they were, uh, they were completely infertile. And a lot of things can get the, the testosterone risen in infertile males. But ashwagandha actually works for the healthy males. That's what's really cool about this supplement. Now, I mentioned maca before. I did need to go backwards and, and, and really quickly say, we have a video with Mark Glazier of NutriBio where uh, I was interviewing him at the 2018 Olympia. And I, I can get Mark going a little bit. And so he was kind of ranting about, uh, it was, it was his, his birthday coming up and he's like, I don't feel my age at all. You know, like, screw that, it's just a number. He dropped some F-bombs and it was great. Good times, but he also went on a rant. He's like, listen, these herbal supplements are very hard for a company like NutriBio because we third party test everything and we test the incoming materials. He's like, listen, guys, I can't keep maca in stock because they keep sending me bunk stuff that doesn't pass the test. That's why you're not going to see a ton of herbal supplements from NutriBio. And that's why we are very happy to see this because this is obviously passing the grade. The second they, it's not passing the grade though, that stuff's going out of stock. Like Mark Leisure does not compromise. Their hashtag is actually without compromise. So that's just a, a, a rewind back to like the whole story. So if you see an herb go out of stock at NutriBio, there's probably a good reason for it. And it's meaning that they're not getting any good stuff in and they're putting in quarantine and dumping that stuff and finding a new supplier. KSM66 from Exorial, pass the test. And that's a great thing to hear because I've always kind of been wondering like, how does it pass the NutriBio grade? And the answer is yes. So back to the 300 milligram dose. Now a lot of the NutriBio consumers are athletes. 300 milligrams a day actually saw increases in both the bench press and the leg extension in addition to larger increase in muscle size in the chest and arms. Um, and so that was the, uh, the ashwagandha. And so there's a few different ways this could work. We're not sure if it's really the cortisol thing, but training volume seems to be able to increase. You're able to, it actually, there's another study that showed the, a lower rate of perceived exertion. So you're training the same as you did a month ago, but man, things just seem a lot easier. So guess what you could do? You could either A, go longer, or B, go stronger, 
Either which way you're gonna get, or both, either which way you're gonna get more volume. And those, that more volume, assuming you're eating properly and getting enough protein and supplementing and what you need to, but eating your beef and your eggs and all that good stuff I like to rant about, if you eat enough, you're gonna gain more with the extra, extra volume as long as the cortisol is low and sleep is right and all that stuff. So it all kind of comes together. And ashwagandha seems to be like an ingredient that kind of pulls it all together like that. So there was actually, in one study, I do not have the dose and maybe you could put it up on the screen, but there was a 3% decrease in body mass versus a 1.5% decrease in the control group. So twice as much body mass loss Mostly, we have to assume most of that is going to be fat loss mass. So there's something now, is the ashwagandha burning the fat itself? I'm gonna say probably not. But is it enabling for better sleep? Is it enabling for better workouts? Is it enabling for less stress eating? Yes, I think so. I think a lot of the problems with our dietary issues outside of basically a basic addiction are, is stress eating. Uh, there was a, a, a phrase I heard where a snack is always an emotional event. And snacking is the worst. This whole six meals a day thing is complete, utter rubbish, in my opinion. And when we snack, it's an emotional event and we don't always make the best decisions. We need to keep our protein high and keep the snacks low and allow our insulin levels to eventually go down so we can burn some fat. If we have lower anxiety, and this is my hypothesis on why this study worked, if we have lower anxiety, lower cortisol, we're gonna have less ridiculous snacking events, and that alone can be the, the, the loss of body mass. But I'm not saying this is a fat burner itself. It's kind of like an indirect mechanism to get there. And so all throughout this whole video, I've kind of talked about the, the reduction of anxiety and I obviously, and I've already alluded to this, like if you have depression, you gotta go get help and everything. But there have been studies that show it helps with those types of conditions. Again, see a doctor, I can't make any claims, but there is something to be said with the ability to lower anxiety in general. Some people like to take this before bed. It kind of just give them a little bit, of, take the edge off a little bit and then sleep. I personally like it first thing in the morning because I know I'm gonna be doing a little bit of caffeine and this kind of lightens out the ride for me a little bit. And, and uh, I end up finding myself not needing more but actually less caffeine when I do that. So that's kind of what I started to discover. And as I fast a little bit, and I'm not a huge faster actually, uh, when I start to fast a little bit though, I do tend to need less caffeine as well. So good stuff. But in general, uh, with all the different studies here, the, this one study, basically, they, they, there's a questionnaire-based thing, but they're really good at gluing this data together. And in general, the quality of life scores were better with ashwagandha. It's just one of those adaptogenic herbs where, you know, a lot of times we hear these, like, these hippies kind of talk about Ayurvedic stuff and this and that, and they're taking, like, we're gonna talk about curcumin in another video because nutribio has got that as well. They're talking about taking various forms of turmeric well, guess what? They're not necessarily taking like bioavailable forms of it. So a lot of times, it's there. You know, we are, are doing a great thing of mixing Western science with the old school Eastern herbs, and we're finding like a powerhouse combination inside here. And that's what's really exciting here because it takes a little bit of the natural, a little bit of the science, and right in the middle is where like a brand like Nutribio lands. And I think that is the coolest thing. This herb is so well studied. I wish more people knew about it. You can't rely on it. But man, if you need to take a little bit of the edge off to get your like get your mojo flowing a little bit, whether you're just trying to like regulate your testosterone levels, or if you're just trying to regulate sleep, or you're just starting what you know is like you're a bodybuilder, you know you're about to start a brutal diet, which I don't always recommend like doing too many times in your life. But if you're gonna start something brutal, or you're going through a hell week, this is one thing that'll help pull you out of that hell week, and you can come out a better person. Now, one more thing. Uh, and this again is, is similar to the anxiety reduction. Actually, two more things. Uh, there are studies in, included in our blog post where we talk about better cognitive function. And I, I think it all, it still, it all kind of comes together. Less stress, you're gonna work better. So this is like kind of like, you can use it as that first domino. Again though, diet's really the first domino. And then finally, what I think is awesome too, is like cortisol causes all sorts of other problems if it's prolonged and high forever. Like, you know, we know that if you're stressed for a long period of time, bad things are gonna happen in your cardiovascular system. It turns out that some indicators of cardiovascular uh, risk, some of those risk factors get improved when you're taking ashwagandha. And so we're talking about like the lipid profiles and the triglyceride levels and the blood glucose levels. So some of the weight loss stuff might have to do with the blood glucose levels. Now we're not sure what's causing what really, but does it matter? If it works, it works. So whether or not the lowering of cortisol is lowering our blood, blood glucose levels 
or it's happening independently, I don't really care how it happens. I'm just happy that we're gonna have slightly low, lower blood glucose levels when using this. Because what we're seeing is the high blood glucose levels leads to high insulin levels, and it seems that the high insulin, not necessarily the glucose, although that's probably problematic too, higher insulin levels is where the real danger is out there. So that's about it for now. I'd like to thank Nutribio for sending this over. Yes, we are sponsored by them, but all this stuff really has more to do with ashwagandha than Nutribio or even sometimes KSM 66 themselves. But KSM 66 by Exorial is the most trusted right now name in the ashwagandha game. And Nutribio is the one company that's doing third party lab testing on top of it with that lot number right there. You can take a look. And so if you're gonna get it, hey, you know what? That's that's my reasoning, but hey, any KSM 66 will do. You know that Nutribio is our brand here though on Price Plow. So if you like this video, I'd love to chat with you a little bit more. We're gonna get deeper into this diet stuff. I have all, I've learned so much over the years that I'm ready to kind of unleash because there's a lot of just disinformation and misinformation. And you have this like ongoing low carb versus low fat war. And I am a low carb dieter in general, but it doesn't mean it's the only solution. And I kind of go nuts when I hear like people, you know, these warring tribes. And it's like, dude, we don't need to be divided like that. There is, there is, there is actually, it is kind of one or the other at different times of the day, maybe. I thought I'll, I'll give you like that hint. But um, I don't think that it has to always be one or the other. And there's like so many things I've learned I want to talk to you about. And so it's not only supplements. It's about diet. It's about sleep. It's about overall health, overall well-being. I'm not interested in longevity. I don't want to live forever, but I want to live great. I'm worried about health span. I want to live great and then die fast. And uh, that has nothing to do with ashwagandha, but I'm just kind of gone off the rails here talking about it. But anyway, that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about. And if you're in for the ride, then subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, like this, share with your friends and everything. And once again, thanks to Nutribio for dealing with me and my rants. We'll see you on the next one. My name is Mike Roberto. I'm the founder of Price Plow. I had a good time talking with you here. I'll see you in the comments. Thanks. Welcome to Price Plow.